All right. We're live. We'll let people funnel in here for a minute or two. What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. Hope everyone's doing well. Going to compete with the Grammys tonight. It's a real test. So if you see me looking off to the side here, I just want to confirm that we're live. Um, confirm that everything is working. Cool. Good stuff. Um, continue to let some people find their way here. Um, why did I go live on a Sunday night? Kind of a weird, crazy time. Um, what's up, Nick? Love the Larry Legend car, bud. That's awesome that your mom uh, and dad bought that for you. That's just a, a cool thing. I, I really mean that. Like Every time you see that card and on your desk or wherever you keep that, that's, uh, that's just going to bring back that memory. That's neat. I like that. Um, why am I going live on a Sunday? I, I think Sundays are really weird. I feel like there's a lot of kind of uh, casual attention, um, especially on social media on Sunday nights. I think especially considering what's gone on with COVID and um, not to do with the virus at all, but there, there hasn't been a lot of content created and there aren't a lot of shows for people to be watching. And I think Sunday night, people are looking for something to do, um, some a, a way to unwind. So that's why I'm, I'm going live on a Sunday night. I feel like it's a good time to kind of shoot the shit with you guys, um, answer some questions, get into some marketing dialogue, have, you know, just a, a good time off the record, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, however long we go here to chat and um, talk about some marketing stuff. I've got some topics that I can bring up and talk about, obviously, so I don't have to rely on um, an audience to to help and you guys can chime in with anything you have. I'm happy to get into dialogue back and forth with you guys, but I have a few topics that I can talk about. Anyone who's watching, who's not familiar with um, what I'm up to, who I am, uh, my name's Corey Keating. I'm co-founder of MCO Advisors. Uh, we also go live every Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. on LinkedIn. Uh, so my um, co-founder, business partner, Ryan Stark, I don't know if he's watching, um, I'm sure he is. What's up, bud? Uh, we go live on Monday through Friday at 9.30. We have a show called The Advisor to Advisor Show, where we literally are producing and putting out content that is directly related to financial advisors and how they can grow their business. Uh, we, we aim to give the advice at a 20,000, 30,000 foot level. Um, we obviously don't know everyone's business. So what we do on that show is kind of just give some high level guidance. And then from there, we hope to work with our guests and, and bring them in. I knew you were watching. Um, so anyway, if anyone who's watching is not familiar with uh, what Ryan and I are doing, um, Emco Advisors, Advisor to Advisor show Monday through Friday at 930 on LinkedIn. You can watch it by following him. But anyway, I got some topics I want to get into. One of them is uh, the top five things um, that I'm having conversations around right now as it relates with you know financial marketing, financial advisor marketing specifically. And one is your digital ecosystem. Two is building pillar content on top of that digital ecosystem. Three is putting together something like this, um, getting out of your comfort zone and getting on a live show, getting live with your community, having Q&A, having open dialogue with people, answering questions. Uh, number four is putting together newsletters, I'm specifically talking e-newsletters. Uh, but Ryan and I, and, and, and we've gone on the record talking about print newsletters uh, a million times as well. But specifically, we're talking a lot about uh, e-newsletters. Finally, social engagement is a big one that we're talking about. And the reason I bring this all up is I'll get into each one of these. Um, <laughs> I'll get into each one of these, but I want every, I want to challenge everybody, whether you're a financial advisor, whether you work in uh, in a mutual fund company, an insurance company, whether you work at a bakery or a, a print magazine, like it doesn't matter where you work or what industry you're in. I want to challenge everybody to think about the opportunity cost of being on the sidelines, like the opportunity cost of waiting is I think so much greater than everyone's than everyone can even imagine right now. So doing is probably one of our biggest motivations right now. And that's one thing that I want to motivate everybody watching this and, and everybody out there in the community um, who's looking to be to grow their business. Doing is the answer. So when we talk about the top five things I'm having conversations around right now, 
a digital ecosystem. This is a big one that I have a YouTube video on. I've spoken a, a lot about um, what happens. Like, let's say you're out there attracting an audience. What happens when you catch people's attention and they're interested in what you're talking about and they're interested in what you have to offer and they're interested in who you are and what your business is? Well, what happens is they start to come into your world, right? They, they click, they, they look, they start to peruse around, they're going to your social media, they're going to your Facebook account, they're going to YouTube, your website, LinkedIn profile, they're going everywhere, right? They're, they're checking out who you are and what you're about because you caught their attention, you've attracted them into your world. Is your digital ecosystem set up to properly present who you are, what your business is about? Is it properly set up to, um, let me th like, I, I think of it like this. You need to make a first impression on somebody without being there. And you don't know when people are doing their due diligence on you. So we're out here marketing and we're doing the best we can marketing. Like right now I'm live. Some of like, there's a, a handful of people here watching. Some of you guys could be in the background that I have no idea who you are. You're considering what I'm saying to be valuable. And you're like, who's this Corey guy and what's he about? You're going to click around. You're going to look at my profile. You're going to go to our website. You're going to find out a little bit about what we do, who we are. And if I don't have, if we don't have a proper structure in place, so if I don't have a personal brand in place to represent who I am, and then that's not tied to the brand that I represent, MCO Advisors, if that stuff's not set up and that foundation is not built, that digital ecosystem is not established, I'm losing you and I don't even know it. And I think that's something that everyone needs to consider. Like, there's so much activity happening behind the scenes. So we don't know how many customers we're losing or missing out on by not having that digital ecosystem built. So that's a big one that I want everyone to consider. Like, it's awesome that you attracted people that you got, you know, 85 clicks on your email. That's awesome. Like, but what happened next? Did you get 85 new clients? You know, how many people did you lose through that, um, that blind first audition? So that's, that's one thing I think everybody should be considering. The other one is the pillar content, building on top of that digital ecosystem. Like when people go to, to your website, go to see who you are, go to find out more about you, do you have enough in place to tell a story to keep that motivation going? Like, can they find out enough about who you are, what you offer? Like, do you have that pillar content in place? The who, what, why, you know, what we do, what we're about, is it clear, is it succinct? Are you proud of it? That's a huge one I'm big on. Like, I think about that all the time, like, especially as the world's opening up and, and people are getting vaccinated and, and kids sports are going to start up again. Like you're going to be standing next to fellow peers at soccer games and little league games, or, you know, depending on your age, whatever, um, you're going to be commingling again at some point. Are you proud of your business? Are you proud of the digital ecosystem you have? when someone's perusing around your business and you're not there to coach them through what to look at? Are you proud of the pillar content you have, the story you're telling to people? So I think that's a really big one. Like, you know, it's easy to walk someone through your own house, but are you proud enough to let someone walk themselves through your house? So has, have what you, has what you built, is, can it stand on its own or does it need you to kind of coach people through it? Something to think about. Um, live shows. I think there's a lot of webinar fatigue out there. And for that reason, I think that's a lot of the reason that Ryan and I and MCO Advisors are pushing the live thing and not live with slides and like a little video at the top here of, you know, me talking. Like live, like, Nick, you got a question, let's answer it. Ryan, you got a question, let's do it. Like how many other people are out there that have questions? What do you got? Like, let's go back and forth. Let's have real conversations. You know, live's a big deal. It's not rehearsed. It's like, I've got a glass of water in front of me. Like, it's it's real human. And, and people can feel that. And I think people can feel your energy and, and who you are and what you're about through that. So that's a lot different than what we're all kind of fatiguing with with the webinars. The webinar thing is talking, you know, uh, it, it's, it's presenting to people. The live thing is having an open dialogue with people. And I think there's a big difference there. So top five things I'm having conversations, just recapping digital ecosystem, pillar content on top of the digital ecosystem, incorporating live content 
Like this is so spot on, man. Like incorporating live content, live shows, live media into your into your world, into your marketing uh, campaigns. The next one is newsletters. And this is one that we're navigating in real time. Like we had a conversation about it on Friday. I don't know if it was, you know, after our show or we had it over Slack or whatever, but Ryan and I were talking like, what do we do with the newsletter? There's value in it. Who do we open it up to and what do we do with it? And I think that's something that everyone needs to, to have going on. And newsletters seem so boring and so trite. Like, all right, everyone's got a newsletter. I'm sick of getting emails. Not if your newsletter is like good. If you have a good newsletter, like there's there's something there. Like um, people will read a good newsletter. Rich, let me jump in here. I think you're referring to live shows. Harder for broker dealer people to do live shows. Uh, we counter that. I counter that a little bit. Um, I actually think it's not a problem at all at most firms. I mean, we're working with the most restricted firms in the United States and coaching people through doing live. And it's just, you don't really mask it. You just present it as if it's a market update webinar or a you know state of the market webinar. And you just go live on it and don't, don't, pilot with 25 slides. So it looks to the BD like a webinar. It behaves to the BD like a webinar, but you just do a shitload of talking instead of presenting. You do a lot more back and forth on that event than you would during a traditional webinar. So it's really all in, it's, it's the, it's, it's all in how the intent you have when you go out to do it. So, um, seems like you know, funny you say that Mason. Um, seems like BDs can't do live shows because they say you can't go live, but you can have webinars and those can be live and just, you know, just talk and engage with your audience instead of present slides to them. Um, everything is definitely awesome when it's awesome. That's a total Ryan comment. <laughs> everything is awesome when it's awesome. More is better. Great is great. Um, I get one newsletter and it's the highlight. I'm telling you, man, there, there's, um, if, if your newsletter is well executed, it doesn't matter. Like if it's called a newsletter and it sounds boring, like if it's a good newsletter, it's a good newsletter. Like if there was the most awesome magazine or newspaper out there that they only delivered it in print and I needed to have it or read it, I would for sure get it. Um, probably not the best example, but like good media is good media. Good content's good content. We're going to digest good content. Um, Mason, this is interesting. You're tripped up on the newsletter versus a live show. Like most people have a hard time getting out there in front of a live show and committing to doing it. And you're saying the opposite. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know what 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 you guys have to monitor you. I don't know what that is, but if if you can do a webinar, like here, I'll, I'll just point blank it like this. Don't use compliance as an excuse. If you can do a webinar and have your video on it and be live, that's a live show. Just it's it's through Zoom and it's called a webinar, but just retitle it. Live with with Rich, you know, talking money with Rich, not to steal Masons. You know, Mason's got a new show, uh, Money with Mason, and he's at a restricted firm. So it's, uh, you can, f don't, just don't let compliance be the, well, can't do it. There's ways, or, there's ways to navigate it within the compliance boundaries. Uh, Keith, I don't read that much either, but if it was a good newsletter, it was, it'd be a good newsletter. Um, oh, compliance. Yeah, that's, I mean, look, it's true, but it, it you guys know compliance. You know what you can and can't say. You know when you're butting up against things that that they're going to have a hard time with. Like, um, you know, the act of going live is definitely easier. Um, getting rich with rich, <laughs> there's a, a, a that, that'll jam you up in compliance. All right, moving on from the you know newsletters. I had my my last piece of. Uh, top five things I'm having conversations about right now, recapping digital ecosystem, pillar content on top of the ecosystem, um, going live, newsletters. And the last one was social engagement. I think social engagement is such a good one. Yeah, I love that, Garrett. Spot on. 
your webinar is not a, or your live events, uh, it's not a webinar, it's a public meeting with a password. Yeah, that's good. Um, social engagement is such a big one. Like, and don't just mail it in. This isn't just like writing awesome on someone's post or like just going through and liking a bunch of stuff. It's actually like engaging with the clients and the people and the audience that you want to have business with. Like it's so important and so valuable. And some of you advisors are doing such an amazing job at it and it's going to take off. It's just a matter of having the patience and the time. Like if you're an advisor and you're engaging and communicating in an industry with the people in that industry, and you're actually adding value into the conversation, eventually you're going to kind of be allowed into the club. You're going to be invited into the, into the community, whether you're a financial advisor, like they're all engineers and your title's financial advisor. You've become their friend and you've been invited in because you've put in three months of engaging their community and adding value. And, you know, I, I can't believe in that more. I think that's such a big one. And Ryan and I are pushing that so hard. Like find your audience, find who you want to do business with and start to get into those conversations. Don't sell to them. Join the convo, talk with them. You know, someone's going to post a picture of, you know, a coworker and them getting together for the first time in a year and going to their favorite lunch spot. And you can be like, I love, you know, burgers at smash burger. One of my favorite joints. Can't wait to be back. You know, it's, it's just getting in the conversation. And, 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 and that is the kind of thing that adds value um, to the community and it, it creates relationships. So I'm big on that. Trace, what's up? Um, you had to make it. You can't be, you were the first one to engage this afternoon that you were going to pour a glass of bourbon and uh, you had some real questions. So I'm glad you made it. Um, Tracy, one of your questions I want to get into while we, I just kind of summarize that. But anyway, recap, digital ecosystem, pillar content on top, live shows, newsletters, social engagement, top five things that we're having conversations on right now. Obviously we get into the weeds on them with individuals on the individual level, we get deep, but um, that's uh, those are the top five things we're talking about. Trace, your question that you put in the comments early on was about you have three or 400 names on a cold lead list and you want to know how to start engaging with them. So my first question, and this is specifically for you, Tracy, is my assumption is you've never contacted them. Uh, I'm going to then make another assumption, like wh whether this is right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Um, do you have a current email newsletter or do you not? And if you do or you don't, that doesn't actually affect the next step. I need you just to send an email to that entire group and introduce yourself to them. So if you do have an email newsletter already going, that's that's already going to a nurtured, warmer audience, send one off email to this cold list and say, hey guys, my name's Tracy Jepson, da 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 da. This is a little bit about who I am. I'd love to include you in my ongoing bi-weekly newsletter. I know, sounds spammy, I promise it's not. There's a ton of value here. Um, here's an excerpt from one of the last newsletters that, that I sent and you know, put something in there that adds a lot of value. What I'm saying is introduce yourself to this group. Don't just include them in, in a campaign because then you're going to get 98% unsubscribes. MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever system you're using is going to flag your account because you just sent a shitload of spam. So don't just include them in a campaign. Take those 300, 400 cold contacts, introduce yourself to them. Doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. Send an email out and say, hi, my name is Tracy you know, get an email out. And then if you do have a current campaign going to warm leads or warm contacts, ask them for permission to add to that. At the bottom of it, be like, if you'd like to be included in this, just reply include. And if not, that's fine. And just keep their emails and then touch base with them all again in mass in, you know, a month, a month and a half. Uh, but you can start, there's, way, there's a way for you to trickle that cold list into your warm list. And if you're not doing a newsletter, that's even better. You're not doing anything right now. Email everybody, uh, you know, and, and one email is going to go to the cold list, introducing yourself. The other email is going to go to the warm list saying, I'm excited to start doing this. And then just now you can kind of group them all together and start from scratch. No newsletter. So cool. Start one.
don't sell to them. Just start one. Market the way you want to be marketed to, right? Like if, if you get an email out of the blue tomorrow morning and it looks like you've just been added to an email newsletter, it's first of all, it's likely going straight to trash the second time you're unsubscribing. So don't just add them to some list. That's not the way to do it. You need to market to them the way you want to be marketed to, and that's introducing yourself to them. I would start an email newsletter. I think you you seem, just based on my knowledge of who you are and what you're about, I think you have a great personality for it. You're building something with your firm. Um, I would, first of all, Tracy, I would be taking everybody along for the, uh, everybody along in the journey with you. I mean, you're, you're filming, you have pictures and stuff going out that's, you know, you and your husband or you and your business partner, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm imagining your husband, you guys are getting pictures taken or photos taken. Um, you've, you've got kind of a new office set up, I feel like. Like, I would start sharing that stuff. That's at least great newsletter content at the very minimum. That's a great place to start. Here's what we're building. Here's where we are in the, the process, da, 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 da. And then, you, of course, you can include a little business at the bottom. Not necessarily asking, but it's, uh, you know, here's some things to consider with the, you know, I, I think you guys are in, involved in accounting. So involve, you know, put some stuff in there that talks about what's going on right now. I mean, there's a, there's a shitload of stuff that people are uncertain about. So you've got a lot you could be doing, whether you're doing it or not. I, I just have a ton of ideas for you. I think you've got a good personality and, and could go quite a ways with it. But having three to 500 names on a list, you know, um, introduce yourself to them. What else have we got here? You guys have been uh, chatting for a little bit. Live. Can we get a live spot on LinkedIn or do you have to get pre-approved? You have to get approved by LinkedIn. And I don't know what LPL's rules are, Rich, just going back on that. I imagine because I haven't seen a lot of LPL guys go live, I don't know that you can. Uh, I don't want to say that though. Business partner, that's cool. <laughs> I don't want to get you in hot water. Um, what's up, Nick? Would you spread the email out over 10 days? What do you mean? Um, I don't really know what you, whatever you guys are having a conversation in the comments. That's, that's all good. I don't know uh, exactly what that means. I think you can, don't quote me no live on LinkedIn. Ryan jumps in with the rules. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen anyone. I, I assume, I mean, given the amount of LinkedIn FAs out there that are really good at marketing, I assume I would have seen you guys go live. So uh, that's probably, probably not it. Corey question. Step one, quick two line intro finish with, FI, FYI, I'm going to send you an email titled The Five Things I Wish. Yeah, I I think prefacing and adding context to any cold relationship is 100% necessary. Um, that, that for me is a, a non-starter. If you plug me into something that I'm not expecting, I'm not even going to give you, uh, I'm not even going to give you the runway of, of, having great content. I'm just deleting it because I didn't expect it. And I don't, I don't really like the way that feels. That feels like you bought my name somewhere, which you did. <laughs> so I'm introducing myself. Like if I've never gotten an email from, from Nick and I didn't know Nick, Nick would, I would, I would hope that Nick would introduce himself and, and create uh, at least some rapport with me as to why he's contacting me. And, and even a two liner could do that. And then like you said, Nick, the structure of it could be, Here's who I am. Here's what I'm about. I hope you don't mind. I wanted to start sharing some of this with you. Yeah, you're going to get some unsubscribes, but it's going to be a lot better than you plugging me into uh, some sort of funnel, automated funnel, which we obviously know doesn't work. Um, a couple other topics I want to bring up. The opportunity cost of not doing, and that's coupled with the opportunity cost of standard production quality. So how much are you guys holding back from putting content out into the world. And I don't mean spamming uh, the feed. I don't mean emailing nonsense. I don't mean being active just to be active. I mean, how many people out there have something valuable to share and say, and how much, how many people out there have good content, but they don't put it out because they don't feel like it's polished enough it looks the part, it fits the narrative. Uh, what are they, 
what are they going to think? Right. I mean, this is what corporate America is missing out on right now. I mean, corporate America is paying a fortune to get their, to get our attention through, uh, overproduced content that we're tuning out anyways. So, and, and everyone at corporate America is afraid to put out the, you know, the content that doesn't have the standard seal on it. But as far as FAs and, and uh, you know, where you guys are at, financial advisors specifically, like how many of you guys get to the point of like, God, that would be awesome. What That would be an awesome video share. I should have done that. This would have been a great post. Uh, this image would be an awesome one. But it doesn't, I don't know, it, it doesn't look the way I feel like it should look. It doesn't have that standard production quality that the guy up the street has, that Morgan has, that Merrill has that, you know, whatever wire house, UBS, like, or that the corporate BD corporate office has, it doesn't look that way. It, it shouldn't have my logo at the bottom and like, you know, be flashy. Like, you know, it, it just doesn't fit the standard production quality that it should. Well, you're, you're saying no for us now. You're saying no for the audience. And I argue that, you know, to Keith's point, put it out, see what happens. If you have something valuable to share, something valuable to say, something that I and everyone else would consume, you not sharing that is like, you know, I can, it's a it's it's a double miss. Cuz one, you're missing on the opportunity of catching someone's attention through that awesome content and now finding not necessarily a new client but at least a new a new audience member. And two, you're you're just wasting time. Like what else are you doing? So the opportunity cost is such a big one for me. Like I know we can get into the clouds on this and I know we've Ryan and I've talked about this on the advisor to advisor show. This stuff's I hate to like beat this dead horse, but this, this, this is going to go away. I'm not going to be able to get in front of a dozen of you on a Sunday night at some point, unless I continue to work on what I'm doing. But like, if you're not, currently building a brand and putting out content and building an audience, eventually the organic reach of these platforms is going to go away. And that's only because people are going to pay to be in front of other people. So then it's just the money is going to, you know, is going to rise to the top. So I don't know, like I, I think about like this, if I had started and, and started following the behavior I believed in when I first believed in it two or three years ago, if I'd started then, it like hurts me to think about where I'd be right now. And like, that's, I think about that shit a lot. Like I, I literally think about that probably daily. Like when I get, when I stumble, when I fumble, I'm like, should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know. I'm not feeling it or this doesn't look right. This doesn't look the part. Like I literally go back in my head of like, God, if I had just, effing done what I know is right, like right now. And, but I thought it in 2018, I thought it in 2019. Like I knew that was the way to go. I saw just a few people doing it. And I was like, this is, this is working. This is right. Like these guys are onto something like good for them for getting out of their own way and doing it. But like, why didn't I do it? And that's the, that's the opportunity cost. That's like two or three years, man. Like that's crazy. So that's the thing that I think about. Like, you guys, like, I don't know, people who are watching who are sitting on the sidelines and, and saying, I know, I know, I know, but then they don't do. Like, you you were probably saying, I know, I know, I know, and you didn't do in July. And you probably said, I know, I know, I know, and you didn't do last January. And then the July before that. And, like, my question is the same exercise that I go through in my head. Like, when are you actually going to do? When are you going to get off the sideline and actually do it? Because that's the that's the point in time that, like, that's the opportunity. I don't know, man. That's, that's just, if you wait till 2023, what if it's over? What if it's just the, the, what if these platforms have matured to a point that, that you can't get the attention anymore, you know, like because Coca-Cola, HP, Dell, Apple, Exxon, whoever you name it, Amazon, they're doling out 20 grand a night to be in front of us. You can't compete with that. So like while we have this ability to be out there, you know, we have to 
take advantage of it because the opportunity cost of, of sitting on the sidelines right now is, I, I promise you, if, if you're in the, in, in the growth stage of your career, or if not, even if you want to hang on for the next however many years, like we're, if we're not doing, we're going to look back and be like, dude, we missed it. Like, I wish, I wish I had, cause that's how I feel. I, I wish I had, like, I'm not talking like, God, I wish I'd seen the internet, you know, like the way social media is going to come up in 2002. I'm not being like crazy about it. Like, I'm just saying literally like 24 months ago, I knew what was right. I saw some of you guys doing it and I was proud of you. And I thought, wow, they're onto it. I wish I had just applied myself at that point in time. So that's the crazy thing. The attention will go away. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, love your post on Friday, man. We need more of that. Like the grateful, like that shit's the truth. Like we can come on here and talk marketing and business and like how to get in front of people. But like that content works too, man. And it's actually like feels good. It's like, you know, I know you have young kids as do I. Like when I drop those kids off at school, I mean, there's going to be a point like my kids are already getting to the point that it's, you know, picking them up and giving them hugs and cuddles, you know, that, that ship's kind of sailed with the two older boys and they're still young. Like it's getting like, so I love the post you shared about like, let's just live in the moment, be grateful for what we have, like, and take advantage of it and not sleep on it, but like reflect once in a while and not get lost in this, you know, rat race. So I, I really like that. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, can I watch can I watch your kids? No, I've got three kids that I'm that I have to watch. And that's why I'm doing this at nine o'clock on a Sunday night. <laughs> um, no, I'm not babysitting anyone's kids. Um, yeah, I'm missing the am I competing with the Grammys? CBS is gonna this is my Nielsen ratings is gonna show up in the on the in the paper tomorrow. Um Two days you don't worry about, yesterday and tomorrow. Are you in Florida, James? If so, I'm jealous. I um, was watching some golf today, thinking about you. Um, they're down in Jacksonville. I don't know where you're headed, but um, enjoy your trip. And uh, if you're down there, enjoy the weather. I think we're talking to you um, tomorrow anyways. But two days you don't worry about, yesterday and tomorrow. Do it today. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, live in the moment. How do we manage what? LinkedIn is so weird. LinkedIn is so weird. We can post daily and get some to little engagement and then get a post that hits and keep posting. Yeah. Um, try to ignore that, Tracy. Literally... I mean, there's some LinkedIn tricks that that I could walk everybody through that a lot of people are familiar with, but some people aren't. Like, don't include links. Like, I'm sure you you know people know that, but don't include links in your posts. The algorithm will kind of smother that stuff. But my advice to you is to ignore it. Ignore what LinkedIn does with your feed. Like, if you put out good shit that I want to consume and that other people want to consume, we're going to like it. Now... With that, I think you have to be smart about when you're sharing it. Like, are you sharing it at a point in time that people are watching and consuming? Or are you sharing it like, you know, if, if you wake up and you can't sleep and you share something at 2 a.m., you're probably not going to get very much engagement. So there's obviously something there as to when you're sharing. Um, but I think it really depends on the content. If it's good, people should like it. Now, is it too long? Like, like the algorithm doesn't just bury stuff. Um, there's, there's definitely, you know, things at play here. It's if people don't like it, you know, we had Kristen Shea on and she's on to something with the first hour. There's like that moonlight time. Like if, if, if you're not getting engagement early, the feed's going to, you know, push the uh, priority of that. That's just the way it is. Um, yeah. There's definitely something to say about when you post. I'm big on Sunday nights. I'm big on, uh, you know, I know the advisor world is heavy on every, you know, weekday mornings, um, you know, and I don't know if that's working for you guys with your clients. My audience, you know, is you guys. So I'm marketing to you guys when I think I can catch you. Um, so the timing's big. Yeah, Keith is, is, is onto that. Timing's huge. James headed to Florida tomorrow. Again, jealous. Enjoy. Well-deserved. 
um, you know, everyone's been kind of cooped up for a year. So enjoy yourself and uh, hit them straight. Uh, and then what was the other one I wanted to talk about? Let's see. Uh, we covered Tracy's newsletter. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have any other questions, anything else you want to talk about. I don't need to keep everybody on a Sunday night. I just wanted to go live, give some, you know, answer some questions, give some feedback. I think the, you know, the top five things that we're having conversations about that I'm talking about almost daily are, is a big one. So anyone who missed it, digital ecosystem, pillar content on top of the digital ecosystem, uh, live shows going live, Q and A's, newsletters, and then social engagement. So. Those are the five things that that we're having the most conversations on around right now. But the big one that that I I, I can't stress enough is uh, the opportunity cost that that we're all missing or that people are missing. You know, take advantage of it. The fish trace, um, fish are good. So there's three of them. Two died, so we're down to three. But seems good. It's probably uh, one of the worst Christmas gifts my wife and I have ever got. Um, it consumes two hours of my time every few weeks to clean the damn fish tank, which is a pain. Anyone who has fish knows. Um, I, I've got better things to do <laughs> with three kids, a house, uh, a family, and and not battling two hours to clean a fish tank. <laughs> the fish are good. The boys like the fish. So thank you for following up. Good memory. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, anyone else have questions? Otherwise, I will let you have your Sunday night back. Enjoy whatever you've got on TV. Um, I'm glad you guys joined me. I like these Sunday nights. We did one last. I didn't go live. I, I just kind of did a Ask Me Anything session in the feed, and I had some real great conversation um, with a handful of, of some of you guys and, and some other people, which I thought was valuable and a lot of fun. So, you know, uh, might be something I continue doing. I'm not sure. Um, I like to relax on Sunday nights too, but if there's some valuable conversations we can be having, I'd, I'd love to be here to help facilitate it. So uh, cheers to everybody. I hope you guys all have a great week. Um, sincerely, like, thank you for jumping on and joining. I'm more than grateful for the attention and, and the conversations. So love you guys. Have a great week. Enjoy and um, talk to you guys soon. And see, I'll see a bunch of you guys tomorrow morning. Cheers.